Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey. And how are we to be victorious in God's eyes? And how does that all work, especially when we experience setbacks? Well, we've got Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly to talk all about it. Good morning. Good morning, Keith. And yes, we all experience setbacks at some time during our life or many times during our during our long lives because that's just the way the world works, right, Adam? And um, we when we experience these these things that push us back or push us down, sometimes we get to a place where we can get discouraged and we feel like we've messed up and there's no way to really climb our way out of it and to restore our friendship with God. But but we know that's not true because the Bible um, tells us that that is exactly the opposite of what God wants for us. So Adam, why don't you begin? Because I know we're going to dive into scripture as well. Well, you know, Deb, I wanted to start a kind of a fun point with this. And that is like, if we think about for most people living in the modern world, what's the idea of success? What's the idea of victory in life that I've won? For most people, I would say that that's, I'm rich. You know, I've, uh, I, I, I've arrived, I've got yeah. the house, I've got the car, you know, I've got the toys, mm -hmm. I've got a vacation. And, you know, one way that we can kind of look at is that all there is to it are those fun stories and they're sad stories. Um, but they're, they're kind of funny because they show human nature. Those stories are about people that win the lottery. Now, of course, some people that win the lottery, they manage their money well, and, and you probably never hear from them again because they're off, you know, enjoying uh, the stability that they have. But a lot of people that win the lottery, what happens? Well, they've got all the monetary success probably anybody would dream of if you've got tens or hundreds of millions of dollars that, you know, we all, uh, basically all of us that are working think, oh, if, you know, if I hit the lottery, I wouldn't have to work and wouldn't that be great? But Deb, what happens for most people? There's something missing in the equation because you, you see those documentary TV shows about it or little YouTube stories. Most people that hit the lottery, within a year or two, the money's gone. It's squandered. So what's the missing piece? If success is just, I'm rich, I've got wealth, if that's truly the only success that matters, then why doesn't it work? if that's all that's needed. And the point is, is that something else is needed in addition to the money. What's missing there is wisdom, right? So, you know, God's idea of victory for us in this life that we're living, that he's given us, you know, we didn't create ourselves. Here we are, we got the gift of life. His idea of victory for us to win in this life is not to be rich is not to get powerful and dominate other people and die with the more toys than anybody else his idea of victory is for us to get to heaven so spiritual maturity that involves wisdom that leads to wisdom that's what ultimately leads to heaven the worldly success without spiritual maturity it's like sand that just slides between your fingers. You can't hold on to it. Right. Right. But but hold on a second, Adam. But if you if you use wealth wisely, if you do have an element of that that spiritual maturity, okay, it can be it can be very beneficial for the world. So there's there's ways to use things um properly in, in with God and and that does actually move you along the, the, the spiritual journey, the growth. It moves you along into that because I know I mean there are a lot of very holy men and women of God that have an an abundance of wealth and they use it wisely. Sure. But but my point is is that they also have the wisdom. Exactly. Exactly. So, Instead of first seeking money and worldly success, we need to first seek wisdom mm -hmm. because then, you know, and, and there's parables about this, of course, you know, to, to those that are given a little, a little is expected, given more and more is expected. Um, God will give resources to people. Of course, that does happen, but without the wisdom, they're squandered most of the time. And so we need to first seek wisdom and spiritual maturity right. then if god provides you know through the gifts that he's given us and you know we apply our talents and our efforts and all of that 
If that comes, well then, now it's not going to be squandered. And th there's a couple interesting places in Scripture that we can go to. So one is, is Jeremiah 29, 11 right. to 13, that I know you love you love, love these it. scriptures. Do you want to talk about those? Well, yeah, and you you want to provide some context um, that it, it's the prophet Jeremiah speaking to those in exile, mm -hmm. and and so you want to look at you want to even go further because typically twenty nine eleven is the is the scripture verse that is used um, on you see it on spiritual art, and so it stops right there. But if it, if it continues on, you you get a better under understanding what God has meant and, and what he wants from all of us. And this is a, a particular translation for surely. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans for you, to, plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. So that part always seems to get missed on the scripture verse. So it's very mm -hmm. important. It's, it, it goes along with like Matthew um, 7, 7, the same thing about we have to search for God. We have to um, want to um, understand God's, God's mind, God's heart, right? We want to understand it. We have to search for him. When we reach out, when we seek him, he is there. He answers us and he provides. And so it's very, very important that we, we understand that, that there's a relationship there. Um, and, and we are to, um, you know, uh, I, again, we always use the words cooperate or participate, participate but it is true. Yeah. We have to, we have to apply ourselves. Yes. And yeah, so I think what you're pointing that out is, is super helpful because if we only read 11, we kind of sit back and say, okay, well, God's got plans for me. Right. He's going to take care of me. Right. You know, the money will come somehow, mm -hmm. but no, we're, it's, we're not to be passive. The other thing that's interesting about Jeremiah is, you know, he's a prophet that's writing letters to the Jews that are in exile in Babylon. So mm -hmm. they've been taken, you know, to another land, um, they want to come home. They're basically, you know, away from the temple. They're away from their, their people, their country. They want to come home, but they're going to have to live there for some time. And so he writes this letter to them to encourage them and say, you know, you have a future of hope. You know, one day you'll be able to come home and God will take care of you while you're in this exile. Well, what's really interesting about that, Deb, I think, is that we can say, well, that's kind of an analogy for our spiritual exile. Here we are on earth, we're separated from God, and it's easy to kind of despair of things here, like, oh, you know, the world is so dark and it's so difficult, and boy, life is toil, and then there's disease, and, you know, I'm so distracted by everything, how am I going to work on my, my spiritual life, you know, is there any hope for me? And this is encouraging us that during this time of exile away from heaven, living in this world, what are we to do? We are to call on God. We are to come to God, meaning like go to church, approach God in our hearts, pray, ask for the help, and then look for God with all our heart while we're in this exile. So it, it's just su such a beautiful parallel to the to the life that we find ourselves in and it's essentially saying like d number one don't give up and then number two i think what we're trying to draw from this is you know don't give up and do your part seek wisdom in this life seek god in this life don't get distracted by this world and think this is all there is because this is a difficult life and I'm just going to pay the bills and, you know, try to scrape some more money together, some extra, and that's where my security will come from. All that is, will pass away. And this is encouraging us that God will hear us and take care of us. We do our part. We pray. We approach him. We seek him. Things, yes, we do have to work. It's not that we just sit back and wait and God will put a check in the mail. But he will provide through his providence. So we do okay. our part here seeking that wisdom. Right, right. And you, you've got to go to the other um, 
scripture passage that we pulled on Matthew, because I just love that one. And if people would really take the time to think about that for a moment and, re- and think about the birds, you will realize that God provides. And it's, it's so interesting how, you know, they don't, they don't struggle because they, they just know that they will, they will be okay. And, and that's what we should, we should understand with our relationship with God and that he does provide if we are, if we are, um, if we do seek him out, if we do come to him with, with our, the fullness of our hearts, that's so important because I think sometimes we go to God and it's like we put a quarter in, we get a gumball out, right? So they, they, some, people, some people phrase it as the gumball God. That's not fair to do to God. He wants a relationship. So why, why don't you go into Matthew? Because I just love that. And if people would really stop for a moment, because they're probably getting, go, getting going with their day and they can probably hear birds outside right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is another one where I think it's good to go a little beyond the the the, the verse that most people stop at. So right. we're looking at Matthew six twenty six, and and we'll move on a little bit into this. Look at the birds in the sky; they do not sow or reap; they gather nothing into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you more important than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wild flowers grow. They do not work or spin, but I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. You know, for, for me, Deb, like, and, and I suppose this is part of, you know, the aging process, reflecting on the fact that we're enjoying so many gifts, the gift of life, the gift of some health to be able to, to move about and do things is it it's just such a wonderful thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay let's hold it there and we'll send it to keith for some announcements and he'll send it back to us for the final segment that's right thank you so much debbie and adam and yeah great advice already and we have just an, a full other uh segment coming up here after the break of the next right thing with debbie and adam but I absolutely loved what Adam and Debbie were saying. You know, don't give up. Do your part. Don't get distracted by the world. And of course, seek wisdom first. It's, I mean, that's that's great advice. So, uh, thank you to Debbie and Adam. And uh, just a reminder as well, if you want more Debbie and Adam, obviously you can tune in every single weekday here on Morning Joy, where truth matters, and and catch the next right thing. But you get a bonus day, and you can catch them on The Spirit World every single Saturday at 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern, where they get to oftentimes answer your questions about, well, The Spirit World, angels, demons, and everything in between. So make sure to tune into that or catch them uh, just by searching The Spirit World uh, on any of the social medias. Coming up next, though, we are continuing this conversation right, on what's the true idea of success in God's eyes. We're going to talk more about that coming up here after a break on Morning Joy, where truth matters. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters. Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and we are continuing the final segment this morning of The Next Right Thing, with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. How to be victorious in God's eyes. Without further ado, Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. So, Keith, I was getting a little emotional there when we went to break because, Adam, why don't you pick up, rewind a little bit, about 10 seconds, because you kind of got cut off, and just go in a little deeper about the scripture passage that we we cited and also um, voiced, because I just think it's important if we... (laughs) You know, we tend, I think generally, we tend to stay on the surface because everybody's going so fast. We're functioning at such a high level and just moving as quick as we possibly can. Remember, we got to stay, we got to stay up with the latest version of the next iPhone, right? We got to go really fast. Um, And I think sometimes if we, if we don't go deeper, if we don't dig deeper, we miss so much of the, of like you, like you shared the spiritual wisdom that will, um, awaits us to to really progress, to really go deep, to really uh, advance. Um, we know that so many of the saints, like Padre Pio, he was he was you know su- 
it's so spiritually advanced and we would love to get there, right? Well, we have to start one step at a time by, by really reflecting on God's word, like the, the passage that you just cited, because I think it's so important. I mean, we can all relate to birds and flowers in the sense that we, we, we notice them, we look at them all day long. And yet we, we, we go, we, we say, oh, isn't that beautiful? The, the sound of the bird or the, how pretty the flower is. But do we really realize how, how God is in charge of everything and takes care of all of creation? And, you know, the realization of how much God is already providing, which, you know, I, I recently had a, a, a little bout of an illness. And every time I, I wrestle, you know, with getting sick, Mm -hmm. which we all go through. One of the things that dawns on me, and I, I know this is no great insight, we've all had this realization, we don't really appreciate health until it's gone, right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. you don't understand what an incredible gift you're, you're walking and living in every single day until you get a cold or you get a flu or you know, something happens and, and uh, mobility issue, whatever it might be. And then suddenly it's like, oh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. You know, here I am, I belly ache to God about, you know, oh, I'd like, you know, a little more of this. And wouldn't it be nice if this was easier? And we forget the fact that like, here we are, you know, enjoying a mountain of blessings every time we take a breath. That's right. Um, but we forget that in the end, we, we gripe about the things that you know, the extras that we wish we had. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, and again, it comes back to that wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. We we have a limited finite life, but it's amazing. And it goes on for most of us for decades. We have the ability to, you know, in our youth to have all this energy and run around the world and, and try to do these projects and whatnot. Um, but the wisdom that comes with, with realizing that that's finite and realizing mm -hmm. it's all a gift Right. We didn't, we didn't, gift. we didn't make ourselves, we didn't, you know, create all of this. Right. Um, it's, it's an opportunity God gives us to grow in wisdom and spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so interesting that you're bringing this up because I think a lot of our listeners, especially if you listen to Take Two, you'll know that I've been um, battling this, this eye situation since March of this year. And, you know, for, for 58 years, Adam, I, I never th really thought about my eyesight in that, in that way. And, you know, you just get up, you do what you have to do, you, you get, you, you go through life. But since March, you know, with, with compromised uh, visual acuity, I have been, it's it's amazing how instantly I realized, and I had such an, a great respect for those that are visually impaired. It, it just it just be, it became this aha moment for me, and I was like, wow. And then to try to navigate through life, you know, using more things like you know, you know, touching things to make sure you have the right you know key keystroke, or or using your using your other senses to really um, pick up where your your eyesight isn't isn't fully there i was thinking man they they go through so much and yet, yet they they have accomplished being able to to um get through this world and you know write books and participate in the world and function and work and i and my my um level of um admiration went sky high for those that are visually impaired going through this but you're so right um, you don't realize it until it, it's, it's taken away or it's diminished. And then you start to go, oh my goodness, you know, I have all these blessings, you know, and, and I didn't, never really, I took it for granted. I never realized it. It just became part of my, my, my natural life. So, I mean, it's, it's, and you were saying being under the weather, you were, you were under the weather recently. It's so true. And as you get older and you, you add age to it, you go, oh my goodness, I'm aging. You know, and I, and I can't run that marathon anymore. I can't, you know, it's, it's, it's really quite fascinating how you grow in understanding and wisdom and knowledge as you are put through these difficult tests. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the time that we have left, I wanted to, if it's okay with you, I wanted to go almost to the end of that Matthew 6. So we started hearing about, you know, Jesus is telling them, look at the birds in the sky and, you know, the Heavenly Father takes care of them. They're not worrying about money and paychecks and paying their taxes. And, the, you know, the flowers and, and they don't work or spin and yet look at their beauty as greater than, you know, King Solomon and his splendor. Well, let's continue because it's going to wrap, it's going to bring us home, I think, with everything we've been saying today, scripturally, which is great, right? 
So let's let's rejoin this scripture at Matthew 6:30. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? So do not worry and say, what are we to eat? Or where are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides. So it's not, we're not saying like this is a prosperity gospel and if you see, seek God, you're going to be rich. Remember, that's where we started. Without wisdom, wealth is wasted. We can't hold on to it. You can't people take it with you. Mm -hmm. Can't take it with us and other mm -hmm. people will take it from us mm -hmm. if we're not wise. It's not about that. We're trying to point out that the gifts of drawing breath, the gifts of, as you say, our sight, our faculties to move through the world and do things, they're gifts from God for our benefit and the benefit of other people as we share God with others and encourage them on their spiritual journey, which points to the wisdom of the overall body of Christ. It's not just about us individuals. We realize at some point that it's about the community. It's about all of our brothers and sisters in humanity and sharing Jesus with all of them. And the Bible is just so amazing. You know, we've gone over a few scriptures today that I'm hoping, you know, touch somebody's heart because it is the Bible. Mm -hmm. Boy, the wisdom here is just, yeah. it's just amazing. The depth of wisdom there, absolutely. And, and it is precious to have all of our abilities to function um, on, in this earth, on this earth, to, to be able to live life and, and to to show up every day. Um, so there's a prayer, and I cannot think of it, but I, after this segment, I will go and research it. There's a prayer in the morning um, to thank God for everything we have, to have the hands to do work, to have the the eyes to see, the ears to hear, the you know the ability to to uh, grasp um, his his will and and to live out his will. There's there's a beautiful prayer prayer that, that people can say in the morning. And I think that's so important to get back to that, Adam, where we can appreciate um, the preciousness of life. Yes. So what is victory with God? Victory is the wisdom that leads us ultimately to heaven. God's victory is a spiritual victory, and God encourages us with these words and others mm -hmm. during this time, our exile from him, that will end someday, and God willing, will lead us back to him. Amen to that. Thank you, Adam Bly. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll send it back to Keith for more right. joy. Perfect. Thank you so much, Debbie and Adam. We'll definitely see you both tomorrow. And I love how, Deb, how Debbie mentioned focusing on the preciousness of God, especially when we first wake up. It's incredibly tempting to grab our smartphone, which is probably right next to us when we wake up, and check our emails, which if we just delay that just a little bit fit in some prayer and just just look outside. I think that would help uh, give us that focus back. But hey, if you really were edified by today's conversation of the next right thing and you want to share it with a friend or family member, simply search Morning Joy wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also visit grnonline.com slash joy to find the podcast. Coming up next... Christ the King. What does St. Thomas Aquinas have to say about that title? We're going to talk about that with Dave Palmer on today's Thinking Out Loud coming up after this break on Morning Joy, where truth matters. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters. <laughs> 